just so everybody knows, I'm just talking to the students now. So all the adults, you really don't have to listen to what I have to say. But I love coming out to talking to students because I'm worried about you guys. Part of my job is to try to figure out where the world's going. In the world and the workforce that you're going to enter into is going to be unlike anything we've ever experienced. It's going to be unlike the workforce your parents went through, your grandparents certainly. Your workforce is going to be turned on its head by a couple of advancing, rapidly advancing technologies that are going to eliminate huge numbers of jobs, huge numbers of jobs. But they're also going to create for you unparalleled opportunity. And those technologies are artificial intelligence, machine vision, robotics, and something we know as much about as anybody in the world in Youngstown, additive manufacturing and 3D printing. Okay? Whole job categories are going to be eliminated in the coming years. Okay? Bank tellers are gone. Hotel receptionists are gone. Fast food clerks are gone. Right? But we're always going to need truck drivers, right? We're always going to need truck drivers. Wrong. MIT is predicting in the next 10 years 3.9 million transportation jobs just domestically, just in the US, are gone because of our advancements with autonomous vehicles. We're always going to need carpenters and electricians and plumbers. Wrong. I've already seen a demonstration of a robotic truck without a driver backing into a building site, extending its 3D extrusion arm, and printing a house layer by layer by layer. But it's just not the blue collar jobs that are in jeopardy. Manufacturers are talking about lights out manufacturing, where we'll have the same output at that plant, but there won't be a single worker in it. But it is just not those jobs. Goldman Sachs alone, Goldman Sachs alone spent over $100 million on its proprietary artificial intelligence program to eliminate some of the highest paid and most coveted jobs on Wall Street, analysts and traders. Because AI can do it better, faster, and cheaper. And you better believe every other investment bank is doing the same thing. You want to go to medical school? It's noble. I'd suggest you don't become a general practitioner because IBM Watson's already replacing the general practitioner. You want to be a surgeon? Have you seen what the da Vinci robots can do in surgery? They can perform surgery 10x better than the human hand can. Okay. It's interesting. Uh, MIT, again, who's, is spending a lot of time thinking about this. And if you want to go on their Facebook page, they're rotating this survey. And they're giving you four job titles. And they're asking you, which one do you think will still be existence in 10 years? And because what I do, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. But what do you think MIT thinks is the safest job that has the longest durability? Anybody want to guess? At the end of the day, MIT, after studying all the job categories, said this category is probably the safest. Yes, sir? Yeah, but that's not what they said. That's what I say. Okay, we'll get to that. 
What job category did MIT say it was the safest? This young man is correct. MIT is also correct. All right. The job category MIT said would be the safest is legal and the judiciary. Why? As a human society, we are never going to let a machine judge us. We're never going to let a machine defend us. And I sure as hell don't want a machine prosecuting me. <laughs> Law school is pretty safe. Medical school isn't, so. But this young man is absolutely correct. I absolutely believe the safest job is the entrepreneur with the brilliant idea. That is your only guarantee when you graduate from college of having a job is if you create the job yourself. The entrepreneur with the brilliant idea will always be safe because the entrepreneur knows how to navigate the changing things that we need to navigate. The entrepreneur will take advantage of artificial intelligence, machine vision, 3D printing. So let me just spend a few minutes on some ideation methodologies, how to come up with a brilliant idea. And here's what I'm gonna promise you. If you take these three ideation methodologies to heart, and I mean to heart, if you think about them every single day, if you start to look at the world, not the way you've always looked at the world, but through the lens of one of these ideation methodologies, you stand a really good chance of becoming a billionaire. And I mean that. Because when you look at successful entrepreneurs, they did one of these three things. All right. The first way to do that is if you can figure out where the world's going before the rest of the world figures it out, you stand a very good chance of becoming a billionaire. Now, that seems almost impossible. How do you figure out the, where the world's going before everybody else does? Actually, it's not that hard, okay? But what you've got to do is you've got to discipline yourself to reading about innovation, reading about entrepreneurship, reading about business, reading about investments, where people are investing money. And when you read an article that makes absolutely no sense to you, bookmark it. You're onto something. Here's an example. Many, many years ago, I read where Google was spending an outrageous amount of money to get GPS positioning down to the quarter centimeter. Does that make any sense? They're a consumer-facing search engine company. Why are they trying to get it down to the quarter centimeter? Then I read another article where for $1.8 billion, they acquired a machine vision company. Teach this chair to see the world like we see it. Does that make any sense? No. Then I read another article about how they were spending an inordinate amount of money on two apps that they give away for free. Maps and Street View. Then the light bulb went off. Way before the name Waymo was announced in the press. I said Google's building an autonomous car. Everybody thought I was crazy but they are, okay? So four years from now, 10 years from now, a new trillion dollar industry will hit the face of the earth. The autonomous vehicle market. Mm -hmm. What billion dollar industries need to be created to service it? When Henry Ford mass produced the automobile, we didn't have auto insurance, we didn't have tow trucks, we didn't have the AAA, we didn't have gas stations, we didn't have repair shops. What are those for the autonomous vehicle industry? Okay. Disrupt a legacy market. Now everybody wants to come into my shop and say they got a disruptive technology. They never do. 
And everybody thinks disruption is technology. It is not technology. What disruption means, the best definition I can give you, is you take a legacy vertical market, you take a legacy industry, and you rewrite the business rules of that industry to the advantage of the customer. Case in point, Dollar Shave Club and Harry's. They are completely uh, disrupting the $18 billion, 150-year-old shaving industry. They're eating Gillette's lunch. Both sets of founders became billionaires in about three years. What did they do? They changed the direction the razor travels to the convenience of the customer. Instead of the customer traveling to the razor, the razor travels to the customer. And by changing the direction, I'm eliminating all these legacy distribution costs and very conveniently delivering the razor to the customer at a price Gillette can't, can't touch and a quality is every bit as good. What other products can you change the direction of? Choose the right one, you have a chance to be a billionaire. Last one. Stop looking at products as solutions. Look at every product that you touch, every product in your hand, as a problem. Now, Dr. West just said this is one of the greatest inventions on the face of the earth, and in fact it is. But it always had a massive problem. What was the massive problem? What's that? Exactly. The trend is in computing is to mobility. From the desktop, to the laptop, to the tablet, to the phone. But is this mobile? And the answer is no, this is not mobile. Because at some point, I have to tether it to a wall. And that's why the patent holders for wireless recharging are gonna be billionaires. John was worried about his connectors. There's no connectors anymore. Apple sealed the phone because it's got a wireless recharging. Every brand, automobile coming out this year has a re, re, wireless recharging pad. MIT has developed fabric that you can license. Here's your startup. That if my phone is able to be wireless recharged, just dropping in the pocket the kinetic energy of me moving around is charging my phone for me. So stop looking at products as solutions. Look at every product as a big problem. Find a massive problem, you're gonna be a billionaire. All right, so let me leave you, I've got two minutes, with a couple resources. First of all, as I mentioned, I'm with the Youngstown Business Incubator, which is not far from you. Three years ago, we were ranked as the number one university-affiliated incubator in the entire world by UBI out of Stockholm, Sweden. It wasn't in Boston, it wasn't in San Francisco, it wasn't in Tokyo. The number one university affiliated incubator in the entire world is probably a half hour drive from you. Take advantage of us. Second, for entrepreneurs, we're curating the internet because we know what entrepreneurs do when you have a question, you Google it. And what I always promise my entrepreneurs is the right answer does exist. So do nine million really bad answers. So we're trying to curate the internet for you and only republish content that you can rely on. We do that in three spaces. My Twitter, my personal Twitter, my LinkedIn, and a YBI Facebook page called Startup Blueprint. If you are serious about entrepreneurship, pay attention to the curated information that we're republishing because we know you can reliably um, use it, okay? So that's us. I can, is there time for a question or two? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my cards over here, pick them up. If we can help you, if, if I can come to your school and, and, and teach a startup one-on-one class, just let me know, okay? Good?